Nation, everyone. Happy new comic book day. Happy Whiplash Wednesday with the PCP Army Bad Batch, guys. It's been a fantastic day. It all started over on Nick Comic Culture's video with, with his Cadets, Toys, and Comics video. That was fantastic, guys. Go check that out on the Rewind. That leaves us to right now. I'll get to the rest of what you have to look forward to from the PCP Army Bad Batch after this video because today is Chatting with the Comic Community, episode 28, and we got the other half of You Promised Me Comics joining us today. I know a couple weeks ago we had Jeremy, the other half of You Promised Me Comics, which was fantastic. So today we definitely had to bring in Caroline's Comics. Let's bring her out. Station. Welcome. I feel like the southern roots with that. <laughs> I I didn't pick the music for that one and that it was already on that uh, edited video, so I was like, oh no, I hopefully she likes it. <laughs> yes, we're good. I am of the south. It is fun. <laughs> so welcome, Caroline, to chatting with the comic community. I'm so excited to have you here today. Very happy to be here. Glad so, we can make it work. So for the viewers at home that don't know a lot about you, tell them a little bit about yourself. Ooh, what to say. Um, so I'm Caroline. Hello, everyone. These are my bits and pieces down here of information. That is me, and that is my co-hosting gig right there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty new to comics. I started reading during the pandemic. And uh, something people may or may not know is I actually manage my local comic book shop now. So pretty big step into the world and uh yeah indies are kind of my stick. poison ivy is my addiction yeah that is awesome so let's get into it how did you get into comics i know you said that you just got into comics through the covid like i want to hear mm -hmm. the story of like how you what comic was your first one you jumped into so it was mostly just needing something to do during the pandemic um and my friend was like hey you know my husband has watch duty today cause he's in the military so i'm running to the comic book store for him like do you want to come with me and i was like yeah okay sounds fun why not i've never been and she was like what you i was like yeah okay we're gonna go now and we went to the comic book store and the first thing i picked up was umbrella academy and the matt fraction iron man the first trade that is awesome. So, like, did you wa really like watch the Umbrella Academy before you yeah, jumped I'd into the book? Yeah, I seen the first season, and I was like, okay, this seems interesting. And I got the whole spiel about how, hey, the books aren't really similar to the show, other than like basic premise. And I was like, cool, I still want to read it. Let me let me at it. And that explains why you're you're picking Iron Man up to this day. I, I always hear you talking about that you're picking up Iron Man, so <laughs> that must be why because you picked it up the very first time in that fraction one. Oh, and I am a diehard Iron Man fan. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man will forever live on painfully in my heart. Endgame was literally on yesterday, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to sit here and cry. This is fun. This is fun. So were you there whenever uh, all of the Marvel movies started coming out, like the first Iron oh, yeah. Man? And I remember seeing it in theaters, the Iron Man, the first one. And then you just loved from there. So that you kind of like that kind of just gave you that passion a little bit by just watching those movies to mm -hmm. eventually jump into the comics. So it's just and like amazing. DC wise too, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogies, like Christopher Nolan movies, I am love, favorite director. So I was already into it way, way, way back in the day. That's awesome. Uh so like what about the CW shows, like the DC CW shows? Were you into those at all? I've seen some of them. I actually have, I have a really weird connection to uh, The Flash, Grant Gustin. He is from my area. I used to row against his sister in crew in high school, and I met him at a crew meet once. So I watched The Flash because of him. But like on and off, I watch them more vis like Netflix, getting to watch them all at once, not as they come out. I, that's how I got actually got into uh, the comic game. Like I love... All, like I'm a huge DC fan, DC mm -hmm. over Marvel all the time. Um, I think it was Crisis on Infinite Earths that made me want to go back and read that and then mm -hmm. go into that. So you being a huge Marvel fan, were you into Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at all? 
Oh yeah, I loved Agents of Shield. I remember watching that and going, "This is dope. I like this. When are they going to bring it into the MCU?" And then I dug deeper into it, and I was like, "Oh, it's never really going to come into the MCU. This is fine." No, they kind of just went their own way after a while. And like Daredevil was phenomenal. I loved Daredevil. Jessica Jones is pretty good. We don't talk about Danny Rand. It's fine. What about Luke Cage? I love Luke, Luke Cage. Luke Cage was great. He was perfect. We don't, I mean, there's nothing to say other than like, I hope he comes back. Same as Punisher. I think, um, oh God, I just forgot his name. I know Joe I Bernthal. John, yeah. John Bernthal, John Bernthal. Yeah. I think he is perfect for that role. Yeah, I don't think anybody can take that role. Just like how Wolverine, like Hugh Jackman mm -hmm. is people's Wolverine, I think. And like, I grew up watching those movies. Like, Wolverine is Hugh Jackman. There is no one else. I, I will never be able. It's like if they recast Iron Man. It's just like, what are you doing, fools? You can't. Now, who would you cast for, uh, uh, let's say, bringing in a new Iron Man and bringing in a new Wolverine? Who would you actually cast? Oh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I just would not. I'd be like, this is a terrible decision. Um, I mean, okay, well, new Iron Man, Riri. That's my new Iron Man. Wolverine, I guess I'd be happy to see an X-23. I don't know who I'd cast other than the girl that they had in Logan. I thought she was pretty great. And she's older now, so. Yeah, she's been playing in a different show with uh, the second Professor Xavier. I forget. It's... It's based off of the book. Oh, oh, um, Golden Compass, that series. Yeah. Yeah, she's been killing it in that. Yeah, I've watched the first couple episodes. I have to go back and rewatch all of it it's now. so much better than the movie ever could be or would have been. Yeah, I find that with, like, it's easier to, like, explore more in in a TV show rather Time than a movie. Just work better when you have more time to tell them. Yeah, and you can flesh out characters it. better as well. Yeah, for sure. So, like, what, what did you grow up with? Like, I know you said you, you grew up with a lot of Marvel, and Wolverine mm -hmm. was your guy. But, like, <laughs> let's see, like, let's hear, like, what kind of cartoons you grew up with whenever you were oh, a kid. I mean, Static Shock. I remember watching Static Shock, getting hyped for that every freaking week of my childhood. Avatar, obviously, in my Fire Nation shirt. Like, all the good stuff. I, I didn't watch a lot of the DC, like the older DC animation. That stuff I've watched now in my like adult life, we'll say. But like, you know, everybody watched Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, Ben 10. Oh, yeah. You grew up in the Ben 10. I, I think I was grow a little bit too old for I that. I was very end. It came out like the first season or two came out like as I was aging out of cartoons. You don't ever age out of cartoons. No, you, you you think you do, but then like you get to that certain age, and you're like, you know what? I am I'm, I'm never going to be aged. I want to see you, and I want to watch Avatar again at 24 <laughs> yeah. years old. Yeah, um, but I do remember watching the Ben 10 uh, live action movie. That was weird. That was a weird yeah, experience. It, it was. It, I liked the music in it. It had yeah. perfect music, but uh, the movie was just CGI different. I wasn't wasn't there yet, but it's a great like. Teen Titans Go, it's the reason I love Starfire. It's just great. So did you ever watch the original Teen Titans cartoon before it got changed into Go? Yeah, the the same similar aesthetic, right? They just changed the title like halfway through. Yeah. Yeah, and like they changed it a little bit. It got lighter. Got more you know, made. It was like, kind of real dark with Robin and uh and and Slade, right? Yeah, like the original, it was it, they dealt with an episode with, to deal with uh, PTSD. Yeah, and yeah. then it got real bubbly. The the go is the really little animated one, I think, and the other one was, yeah. Yeah, they did do a crossover. Um, I think Teen Titans Go to the movies, and it was like Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go mixed together. I remember watching the ori original Teen Titans as it came out, but I watched Go, the internet wise, as the seasons. Right on. So any uh, live action TV shows that you loved growing up with? Oh, live action. I mean, I don't know why, but the first thing that came to mind was the, the original Sabrina, the live action Sabrina with Melissa Joan Hart. Like that was a classic. I was watching like Full House as a kid. Um, like, like Disney Channel was what? Like the good Disney Channel, the early days of Disney Channel. Like Boy that Meets World. And... Yeah. 
I love Boy Meets World. Disney Channel original movies. Oh, I've been going back and watching a lot of original movies, like mm -hmm. it being so close to Halloween now. Uh, growing up, I was watching Halloween Town. I don't know yes, if you've ever watched I that. Halloween Town. So I've been loving that. I think I watched. I, I watched all three. I haven't. I didn't watch the Halloween Town Returns because they switched the main actress. Yeah, it's it's vaguely nostalgic. I don't want to say that it's worth it for the nostalgia, but it's vaguely nostalgic. What other Disney shows? Like, I'm I'm curious now because like I've I've been I love Disney. That's what I grew up with. And I mean, I remember watching like you know that's so Raven. Um, was it, no Invader Zim wasn't Disney. That's too no, for Disney. That was I think that was Nickelodeon. No, oh, maybe it was Nick. Um, God, what else? Uh, who is the? Who am I thinking of? Oh, Lizzie McGuire. I'm like the girl with the little animated character. Yes, I remember Lizzie McGuire. Oh my God. Kim Possible, not live action animated, but still great, still iconic. Mm. I love Kim Possible and that uh, Ron Weasley was my, mm -hmm. was my guy. And like, just to come to find out, like Ron Weasley was Eric Matthews in Boy Meets World. And he was also, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was also Batman Beyond in the batman Ooh, beyond series i didn't know that so it's yeah um forget his actual name in real life but yeah he's he's a great voice actor but he was perfect as eric matthews in boy meets world but uh have you been watching the the remake of that's so raven i know that came out with um i have not i did not hear the best things about it and i was like oh, it's fine I have my nostalgia for the original show. Yeah, and you don't want to go and ruin exactly. it. But I am very excited to see whatever this Proud Family like remake continuation thing that they're doing is, because that show was fucking great. I didn't even know that they're making that. Yeah. I think it's a continuation of it, not like a flat remake. It's just like Penny and her kids and like her friends and their kids and stuff like that. Okay, so kind of like what they're doing with That's So Raven. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't know how I feel about the whole passing on the powers thing. Hmm. Um, I know, I know that they're planning on doing a Lizzie Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, it off, fell I think, through though. I, I, yeah, I remember the Lizzie McGuire movie, like, and oh, so iconic. And I was a huge. I, I don't. I'm gonna say like I'm not I'm not afraid to say like I was a Hillary Duff fan. I liked her. Oh, I had a crush on her probably. Um I remember Cadet Kelly. I think that yes. was my favorite. The spinning of the rifles. Yeah. yeah and it's so funny good. to see that her friend in that show. Did you ever watch Lucifer? No. Um, there's a girl that it's like she works in the medical place on Lucifer. She was like the best friend, like the one that gave Lizzie McGuire's or Hillary Duff's character a hard time in that movie. Oh shit! So, okay. But I love that movie because it was just like, all right, going from Hillary Duff to she's in Cadets now, and I was in Army Cadets at that time, so I was like, yeah, frig yeah, I'm gonna watch oh, this. Wow. Just yeah, I mean, I'm a military kid, so I was like, ooh, I vaguely understand what's going on here. Yeah, it was a fun, fun ride. Um, speaking of Disney, like. I've asked people this before, like uh, most, like M MVP, like most vertical primate, most, like, do you remember that, those movies at all? Like it had a monkey that would be a skateboarder with a skateboarder friend in that. And I don't know if that was Disney. I'm I pretty sure it was Disney. I just of the vaguest memory and it's gone, but I'm like, maybe? I, I got to look that up on like... Because nobody remembers those, like everybody remembers like the the buddies, like oh hell yeah, but nobody remembers the the primate, and I'm like guys, you got to remember him. I got to look it's on Disney later. Thing. Look, vertical primate, it's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, it's called MVP two most vertical primate. Yep. Yeah. Hey. One film. Yeah, and the first one was uh, it was a hockey one. Where he was most most valuable primate. Nice. 
and he played hockey and stuff. So I, I always thought that was cool. Like you can train a dog, but when you see a monkey, it's just I've always wanted to own a monkey. Fair. Monkeys are pretty great. Are you watching Why the Last Man? Um, yeah, and I am kind of really upset that it got canceled. Yeah, I am too. I hope somebody else picks it up. But the monkey, totally CGI. 100% CGI. It's not really? a monkey any way, shape, or form. They're like, we're not trying to deal with anybody, anything. It's just, a, it's CGI. We've got the kind of money for it. Well, that's that. That kind of ruins it for me now a little bit. Because, like, I, yeah, I remember they're watching. They're about animal abuse and people like, you put a monkey in a cage. It's like, it's trained. It's okay. <laughs> it's really okay. Yeah. Because that's like the why I, I, I love friends and stuff. And I remember when he had that mm -hmm. type of monkey as well. So I was like, it he looks acted him. with it very well for it not being real. I was like, really? Really? It's not real. And they're like, nope. It's totally CGI. So what do they do? Do they just, uh, do they have something there like a puppet? Probably. I haven't seen the non CGI version, but I'm assuming that's what it is. In the most recent episode with, it in it episode seven like there's a scene where it's playing with this little toy and you're like oh, okay that's clearly cgi but that was the first time i'd noticed it I, that's yeah it is kind of upsetting that they canceled it did they give it a reason why there's not enough viewers no, i have no idea mm. i don't think hulu has actually put out a statement it was the showrunner or the director that put out a statement and then Brian came on and reposted it like, yo, I just saw this. This sucks. I'm pretty sure it might get picked up. I would hope that HBO or Netflix would pick it up. And here's the thing though. Um, and it's surprising because I was watching this um, just beyond Arl Stein's just beyond on Disney. Mm -hmm. That's a boom title. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, and, and they don't shy away from, like, showing, like, boom titles in that show either because you, you, you're you in a comic book store at one point and you see, like, way. Yeah, I saw a post about that. There was, like, a screen grab with, like, all these boom comics on the back wall. I was like, oh, that's clever of them. So what just makes me believe, like, is there a possibility that we'll get, like, other titles, like, not, like, say, DC or something, but, like, from indie titles onto Disney? Because Disney itself is, is Disney. Then they have Marvel as like a separate thing. I wonder I if they're allowed to do that. I don't think that's in the realm of impossibility. Um, I don't think Marvel or, um, excuse me, Disney would be allowed to make something like an exclusive first look deal with like Image or something like that. Because that could be looked at as a monopoly. Like you literally own the rights to one third of the biggest comic book companies. Like it's, you know to then have a first look deal with the biggest indie publishing company, like they'd probably be a no, no, but to just pick and choose and be like, Hey, we want to, you know, make this item specifically, as long as their catalogs don't weigh too heavily, they're probably fine legally speaking. And I don't have any issues with it. I just want to see the stuff get made. Yeah. And I actually, well, made well, RL Stein, like the just beyond is just, it is for kids, but I watched it and it's, mm -hmm. it's quite entertaining. And, and that and it's it's not i don't think it was a comic book i think it was like a boom book first like it, it came out as a collected edition or something like oh, that okay, like the whole novel and then yeah because there's no comics the only comic that they had was that free comic book day book interesting like, uh, i was just looking that up and that but i i liked it i it's an anthology so every okay. every episode's different I'm down for that. I see. I heard that Amazon bought um, Ice Cream Man rights. So we'll see if that actually ends up getting made. That would be a perfect anthology. I love anthologies sometimes because, like, they're just they're fun. And Black Mirror was phenomenal until it got too full of itself. What was that? Black Mirror. Oh, have you not watched Black Mirror? Oh, I've watched a little bit of Black Mirror. I Here's what that. I tell everyone about Black Mirror. Season one, episode episode one, skip it. It's a horrible tone setter for what's coming your way. Season one, episode two, one of my favorite episodes of television ever. All right. I'll have to go check that out. Watch it. It's not worth it. I almost didn't watch any more of it. And then the last seasons are eh. But like, the first three, not bad. 
Oh, speaking of anthologies, uh, they're coming out with a uh, Walking Dead anthology series. It's going to be in the realm of that world, but it's going to be a one and done story. So they could go back and they tell the story to of do that for a while. I'm super pumped for that. I love Walking Dead. Have you been There's keeping a up with Walking Dead? chance that that is not getting made into television. I haven't read it. I watched the show. I got bored with the show around the time of the, the governor and all of that stuff. I was like, I don't know, you guys stop dealing with the zombies as part of the threat, and they're still part of the threat, not just the humans. I got, uh, I got bored with it. Yeah, I, and think that's what they were going for, though, that it's just like, it's like really we are the walking dead type deal, and they're like, it's like, just to show like that in a zombie apocalypse, it's not just the zombies that you have to be worried about, it's sometimes Yeah, but people... you, you still gotta worry about the zombies, too. They're not just not there. Very true. Very true, but I've I've been loving. I keep up with it. Sometimes I take breaks from it, but this season, um, they introduced Princess, who is I've one of my it's favorite. Gotten a lot better. Like I dropped off where a lot of people dropped off, and then apparently, like four seasons later, everyone's like, hey, "It's really good again." Start watching it. Yeah, it's like anything though. But I, I'm that type of person who's like, okay, I love the first season of something, and I'm, I'm just gonna stick it through, and I, I have to finish it. It's not like I you have to pay for I each issue. The fact that they they killed my sweet baby man. Who's that? Oh, okay. Sweet precious baby. So yeah, that's the thing that they could do with the anthology series. Like they can bring Glenn back and tell like a story oh, yeah. from whenever he was doing pe like whenever he first got into uh, when the zombie apocalypse like yeah, broke like out. how he started helping people around and stuff. I would watch that although he's way too old to portray that character at that age anymore no nah, robert kirkman has lots of money he can de-age him just like marvel <laughs> that's fair so like what have you been collecting so far now like what have you been getting into for collecting wise I mean, I still collect like my weeklies and everything. What a lot of I've started doing is like reading older series and then as I like it, going back and trying to find like single issues of it. So like I would say Wicked and Divine and Saga are two that I'm doing that with right now. Same with Umbrella Academy. Cause I'm like, I'm not concerned about trying to find them and read something that old issue by issue. Like it's either gonna be really expensive for random sporadic issues. I'm just not gonna find them or it's gonna take forever. So I've been doing a lot of that lately. And then as usual, you know, collecting specific characters and artists, Poison Ivy, you know, Zoe Lachey, Justine Franny, Jen Bartel. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. Like it's it's easier to read a series instead of like going back and find them single and like go find a trade paperback. And that's a I gotta give it to Image. They're most times their first volume of, of a trade paperback so. is like yeah it's 10 bucks or cheaper than that and just goes up after that but they give you a chance to like see if you like mm -hmm. it first we and get a lot of people coming in and they're like where do i start like what should i read and it's like well anything on those shelves that is the single issue comic books you're probably not going to be able to catch up on a series like that like we're probably sold out of the early stuff or random sporadic issues like Trades are your way to go until you know what you like and then hop on to a new series from there. Otherwise, you're just kind of looking because half the stuff you can't order anymore after the day it comes out. I actually want to touch on that, too, because like the, I, I just found out you, by you telling me like you're managing the comic book store. Like You've gone from starting your collection to... We'll <laughs> now get I into, still look for people professionally. Yeah. And then go from like talking about comics online to eventually having your own exclusive to managing a store. Like it's been a journey for you. And yeah. let's talk about like how you, those steps that you took to, uh, to starting to manage your own comic book store. It was a total surprise. I had actually just started a new job somewhere else and I saw they posted on Instagram. They're like, Hey, we're hiring. And I was like, Whoa, cool. I want to work there. And then they told me who was leaving and I was like, I don't like this, but okay, I'll still work here. Cause this is my favorite clerk who's leaving. Um, and he's like, yeah, well we need a full-time manager. And so I just applied on a whim and he was like, yeah, we like you. You want to come work for us? Oh, well, I thought that was going to be longer, but 
No, it was really short. It was just <laughs> like they happened to be hiring. Like I hadn't been like working my way in or anything. I just, you know, I would hang out and chat with everyone that works there. I knew the owner because it's a small, it's a really small shop. We're not like, you know, we're not Midtown or anything crazy like that. It was just one, one shop, one local comic shop. So let's, let's back up a little bit from starting the comic book shop. How did you begin talking about comics online? So I know one of my friends had made a, an Instagram page for like her, you know, her COVID hobby thing. And I was like, hey, I bet there's people on Instagram who read comics. Turns out there's a lot of people on Instagram who read comics. So I made my, uh, my Instagram page and made friends. And then someone was like, hey, you want to come on YouTube? And I was like, okay, sure, I guess. And then it just kind of took off from there. So did you do you have your own YouTube page, or no, was it just straight Instagram and like an email account with Google, and so you kind of automatically have one? But I don't post anything on my page. It is solely through the You Promise Me Comics. So I'll how did do that no video editing? We don't want me to do that. I will delete all the files accidentally. I know I'm like I'm not good at video editing either, but I, I try and stuff. But like. It's why we do mostly live stuff. We, we we try and edit as little as possible because we're both like, I'd rather not have to re-listen to myself talk. That's the biggest thing I find. Like, I was just like, oh man. And like when you're editing, you're just like, oh man, this is the part where I do have to what put I up the volume. <laughs> I was like, damn it. Do I really say like and um that much? <laughs> and then it gets in your head and you're just like, mm -hmm. nah. Eh. And then this is the added feature of right now, I'm looking at you as I talk to you, but when I play it back, I watch myself and I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> why <laughs> yeah. am I looking at that? Why am I not looking at the camera? And it's like, well, I'm looking at the person. Yeah, it's so different too, because then you're looking and you're just like, okay, I'm staring at them, but I'm looking this way. Like, what's, what's mm -hmm. going on here and stuff? But yeah. Like, what was my cat doing that made me just, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I have a lot of noises in the background sometimes. So I'm just like, all of a sudden I hear that. I'm just like, oh, that stuff. Yeah, I've got my windows open today because it's so nice. And I'm like, I really hope nobody starts doing lawn care. Yeah. I play these like a live. So right now, this all this conversation that we're having right now is just going to be on the live because this is how I, I started this show is to do it live and that. But to mm -hmm. do it every week on a certain day is kind of hard to get everybody oh, online with it. Yeah. So pre pre recording stuff does it it does take a lot of the uh time constraints out some days which is nice yeah that's the best part but like yeah it, then you moved from instagram i i've seen a lot like i've gone back and watched some of your videos on instagram and commented mm -hmm. on a few um and then you you moved to youtube and that so yeah. like let, i felt like about... it's also easier to interact with people like on youtube lives and things like that because i can have the you know the recording up on one screen and be in the comments on the other whereas on your phone you're like okay let me get really close all of a sudden and tap 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 what's everyone saying oh now i gotta it's just like mechanically it's a lot easier yeah i, I agree and, and plus pre-recorded i could put all my time and focus into you mm -hmm. and then put all my time and focus into the chat when i pr yep. re put it onto as a premiere so i, I love that aspect as well so everybody that's watching right now, Station, you guys are all worth it. Hey, go well, sub up to Caroline. Or, you well, go it. sub up to You One Promise Me Comics. Thing. Say hi to the cat. I woke her up. She's done now. <laughs> Let's see the cat again. Mango, it's your debut. <gasps> She's like, I would like to go back to my nap. You can't. You're famous. <laughs> yeah, just like the eyes are just like, all right, I'm not, I'm not cool with this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I would really like to be put down. So yeah, you went from Instagram posting a lot of stuff to YouTube and working with Sparks, who I've had on this channel uh, a couple weeks ago. And you guys changed you promised me comics, and you guys got an, an exclusive out, which is fantastic. Yeah. So like, how was that journey? That was fun. It was. It started with us just kind of hanging out, and then he was like, you know we do a lot of this stuff together. We may as well actually make it like officially, not just him. And I was like, Hey man, it's your channel. You do all of the editing. I just show up and ask questions. 
I hang out for funsies. And so we ended up changing it. Um, and it's been totally fun since. Like, we, uh, it's been really, really fun making videos, kind of deciding what we're doing. And we're getting ready to go to Baltimore Con, and we're going to be hanging out there. We've got stickers and pins with um, our logo on it and everything. We're going to have some of our exclusives with us to sell. Sign them if you want us to. A couple people have asked. So it's really just been, you know, kind of one step at a time, just like little little baby steps that somehow turned into really big things. So you guys are going to have your own table at Baltimore? No, 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 no. We're just going to be walking around the con. Oh, okay. That's yeah. awesome. So anybody that's going to Baltimore this year, yeah, you see make me. sure to Come say hey. get an exclusive from them signed. Myself or Jeremy. Both of us will be there. We may not be together constantly because there's multiple things we all want to go do and see. But we'll both have stuff on us. So find one of us and get things from us. I'm not sure. Like, I've never been to, like, I'm from Canada and that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been to Baltimore Comic Con. How big is it? I've never been. I've never okay. been to a Comic Con. This is my first one. Oh, that's nice. I hope you enjoy yourself. Yeah. And it's my birthday weekend. My birthday's the 25th and it ends on the 24th. So I'm very excited. I'm going to spend way too much money. So the 25th of October? Mm hmm. Well, this will be airing after October. So happy birthday. Thank you. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah. I hope you, I hope you both enjoy your, your time there. Is there going to be any creators there that, uh, that you're looking um, forward to seeing? I want to see Brian K. Vaughn, Becky Cloonan, um, Trish Forrester is going to be there. Mm. Um, there's a whole list of people I'm very bad at remembering. And especially when as somebody asks me, I'm like, Oh, I don't know. But Brian K. Vaughn's going to be there. I know for a fact. Um, Cammie Garcia, who does the the novels for DC and it's the Beast Boy, the Raven, Beast Boy Loves Raven, that series. I, I wanted to pick that up actually, because I'm a big it's Beast really Boy cool. and Raven fan. It's uh, it's young adult, so it's a little, you know, in that format of reading, but it is still phenomenal. It's amazing. So you mentioned Trish Forstner, who you've also had on the show yes. as well. Are you it's so, so excited to meet her for the first time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to see, I'm bringing a blank sketch cover. I'm like, Trish, because I've harassed her about it. I'm like, I want you to put my cat on a cover. Ryan, I, I've talked to Trish, like, on Instagram, and that is just amazing. Like, she's, she's such a nice person. She's so genuine, and you're just like, how does someone so rainbow, my little pony, rainbows and sunshine and butterflies and happiness, do what you did to us? I know. And it, it was her first work, which is fantastic no. because like you, you've seen the My Little Pony come out before Stray Dogs, but mm. Stray Dogs was her first work. And they've been working on it for a while and it's in the process of becoming an animated movie. So I'm just like, how did your sweet, sweet self create this sick, twisted, dark adventure that I love so much? Yeah. And it, it's, you keep thinking about it. It's just like, why do I love this story so much? It's about like literally the worst dogs getting ever. kidnapped and stuff. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, it's not, nobody even cares. It's not nobody. But like, we're so chill about the fact that like the owners are just straight murdered. We're more upset about the dogs. Oh, wait. The, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, people are just kind of like, eh, whatever. Who cares? But the dogs. Yeah. It's just like, it goes to show that we, we really care about dogs more than people just sweet little innocent babies usually and they're coming out with another see it what is it uh three three issue that mini is dog days yeah it's going to be about the the ones that came before yeah the ones that ended up on the wall my cat is doing very cute things begging for attention <laughs> So you guys are talking about dogs. What about cats? Come on. She's now. like, excuse me. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're very cute too. You are. You're adorable. The internet loves you. So now moving on, I have seen a little bit of DC fandom. And since we're a couple weeks out from that and stuff, mm -hmm. so we can give spoilers. I want to hear your thoughts on DC fandom. I am excited. <sighs> I hesitantly say excited. I'm really excited for like all the animated stuff that's about to come out. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be dope. I am in the very small percentage of people that does not like Flash's new costume. I don't like the way the light travels up and around. I, it, 
it looks kitschy 90s vibes and it's not my thing but hey you know whatever um and to be honest it doesn't look real it's kind of yeah, going back to that it whole looks heavily cgi yeah i when i look at that suit all i think about is ryan reynolds in the green lantern suit yeah yeah, and I think that's where I feel that. I'm just like, it just feels something is slightly... I just don't feel like I can reach out and touch it, you know? I, I, I'm I very vocal on I don't like Ezra Miller as the Flash. So. Yeah, after the whole uh, throat choking the fan in the bar thing happened. I haven't been the most pro him. Yeah, neither have I, but like... I think everybody's freaking out over the Batman trailer. I enjoyed it, but like part of me is like I'm super excited for Black Adam. Super I'm, excited. I'm not excited for I'm not I think The Rock is always the same character in everything he does. That being said, I don't want to say that he can't act because I do really like ballers. I just feel like that's the only thing I've ever seen him put effort into. Oh, okay. So I'm like if he really tries, I think he could do a wonderful job with this character. And aesthetically, he is perfect. It's just... He's very monotone in most of the things we see him do. Yeah. I and there's, have... there's that meme where it's like four pictures of him standing around in a khaki shirt and khaki pants. And it's like, would you believe these are all from a different movie? Not nah, true. It's just photos of The Rock in like tropical settings in like guide outfits i think the thing i'm most excited for for the movie is like i think the jsa is supposed to be in it the justice yeah. society of america and i'm super pumped for uh dr fate to finally make his live action debut i like i said i think it'll be good i have faith i just really it, if it's not good it's gonna be fucking terrible unfortunately yeah but I think it'll it'll get the best of it. Um, you said you did like the animated shows that are coming out. Yeah, I mean, I'm so fucking ready for Injustice. I want to see dark, dark murders happen. Punch a man's heart out. Fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what about that Aquaman one? That Aquaman one kind of seems a little weird, but I'm I'm on board for it. I think if I think Aquaman works best when you play up how fucking weird he is. Yeah. Like, you're, you're weird, dude. You're cool, but you're weird. And it's okay. We still accept you. And uh, Young Justice. I don't know if you've watched Young Justice from the beginning, but I, I have. And I've, been I've seen a few of the episodes. I started watching a lot of DC stuff, and I was like, I'm going to, I'm still in the middle of watching Star Wars, um, the Clone Wars stuff. So I was like, I'm going to finish this before I watch six more series of things. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with that. But, like, yeah, Young Justice, I'm super pumped for. Like, the last season they dealt with the Outsiders, which I'm a huge Outsiders fan. I have, like, um, the 2003 run um, of the Outsiders and stuff So by Winnick. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped for season four. It's been a long journey for Young Justice, too, because Young Justice came out, I want to say, like, a good 10 years ago. Yeah, Almost. it's been out since I was in, like, high school, probably. Yeah, I was just hitting, yeah, I don't know. It was either high school or, like, my freshman year of college. It's been it's been a while. I know they canceled it. They did two seasons, and then they canceled it for a while, and then they brought mm -hmm. it back. And the reason why they did that was not because of the viewerships. It was because cartoons, the way that they stay on is toy sales. Toy sales like keep shows on. Interesting. And it's not like it's not how like regular shows work. Like how, all right, it has this many viewers. We're gonna keep the show on. No, it sold this many toys. And to be honest with you, I don't see any Young Justice toys, or I'd own them. Hopefully, they start selling them. I personally very excited because we got just the announcement of they're doing a Milestone animated universe. Static is my boy. He's my homie. I love him. Protect that man at all costs. So I'm very excited for that. And Nicholas Draper Ivy, the guy who's been doing the interiors on um, Static, is involved in the animated movie. So I am 
Russian palm tree. Okay, it's a, it's going to be like I only seen bits and pieces of Fandom, so it's going to be an animated movie. It's an not animated a live movie. There, so there is a static live movie being produced by Michael B. Jordan. I think it's kind of a standalone thing. I don't know that it's necessarily making a milestone universe, but they are doing an official milestone universe animated movie, not just static, not just hardware, but like the whole. So it's going to be like Justice League with milestone. That'd be interesting. Like, I do agree. Like, Static Shock, I grew up with that um, show. way more attention and love. Um, I think around that time, it was Static Shock and X-Men Evolution were the two shows that I, cartoons that I watched back-to-back. -back. Was Nightcrawler in that? Yeah, okay, I watched that. 100% mm -hmm. I watched that. Yeah, it was the one that came out during the time of the the first x-men movie okay yeah I have, I have vague memories of that but i specifically remember him being in that show yeah you had like blob in there toad avalanche for the brotherhood of evil or the yeah um mystique was the school counselor yes so yeah that was a fantastic show i remember that one more and i love that one but yeah, between that and Static Shock was always my Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep, remember Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is getting Funko Pops. Are they really? Yeah, I might actually get those. <laughs> They're doing a, a Blue Eyes White Dragon. Is that what they were called? So it's getting a little baby version of that. Yu-Gi's getting one. Um, the girl with the blonde hair, whose name I forget, is getting one. Uh, else. I'll send you. I'll send you the um, the thing. Remind me when we get off. I think it's Tia. I don't remember. I remember watching it though. I think Joey was my favorite. Don't yeah, remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I'm. I'm ashamed of myself for knowing all this, but yeah. No, uh, One of my coworkers is really into Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm like, this is good. You can educate me because I don't know. I don't remember anything. I just like the the vast amount of characters and cards that you could use, and it, it was it was kind of cool. Oh, I remember playing. Brum, brum. <laughs> but um, DC fandom. What else came out from DC fandom that was fan freaking fantastic? I mean, I am excited for the Batman, but I think our paths is going to do a great job, and I personally am very hyped for a Riddler movie. It is going to be real great. I'm ready for it. They still haven't told us who's fucking playing the Riddler, and I need to know these things. Yeah, they're keeping it hush hush. which is freaking fantastic. That's that. I and I love how they're doing that because you, them because I need to know. And, and not only that, like the question mark, the whole wondering, like it, it does play into the Riddler perfectly because, like, it's it's a whole riddle. Like, who is this guy? And. You're, you're thinking the whole. You're probably going to be thinking the whole movie, and we're probably not going to get a reveal of who it is until oh, no, the very we're end. Not going to get, yeah, yeah. And like, I, I think that's I think there, like that's perfect in my opinion. That they I think, they're, gonna, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a fantastic standalone movie, regardless of anything else. I don't know if they'll do more because it is set in its own universe. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I. I do you kind of think that DC should kind of run that route a little bit with some of their movies? Like mm -hmm. they kind of missed the point. I know they didn't want to like copy Marvel, but yeah, you do need to introduce characters in their own movies first for people that don't know who they are mm -hmm. or you, what kind of version this Batman is. Or the movie needs to be an introduction to that character. Mm. So uh, know, we got vision Scarlet, Witch. we got, both of them in an Avengers movie, but it was also an introduction as to who the fuck these people are. They didn't just show yeah. up and they're like, hey, I exist. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and, well, and you've seen how well the Joker movie did. It was a standalone. It wasn't, it was, it was in its own universe. So I think that's the best route DC can go right now instead of making a shared do universe. They have a lot of room with it like they could just do a lot of black label shit for a while yeah and just do that just do some standalones until they really take the proper time and care to 
flesh out their characters. And, and like, expand it a little bit. Like, that's why, like, I like the Shazam, because, like, you, you're kind of expanding it. You're not mm -hmm. sticking with Superman or Batman or... Shazam took me so long to watch, and I regret that, because it was actually a really enjoyable movie. Wonderful movie, wonderful cast, really well acted. And then I come to find out, like, yeah, they actually were never gonna... Like, he's not in... It's its own universe currently. Yeah, in a way, because um, Superman did show up in at the end of Shazam. The very end. But that Superman no longer exists. So this is going to have to be a different Superman in a different universe. And I love how they're... they're I've seen the trailer for the Shazam movie, and that looks fantastic too. And I'm, I'm loving how they're expanding the Shazam family mm -hmm. more. So, um, who are the villains that are going to be in that again? I don't remember. <laughs> Could be real honest with you. I don't know much of Shazam other than the movie. That's why it took me so long to see it. I was like, I don't know anything about him. It. Shazam. He yells his name and then he turns into a kid or not. Yeah, they did have a, a, I think a TV show in the early 80s of Shazam. Too early for me. Yeah. I wasn't even born. <laughs> nope, not quite. So what other shows, what other nerdy things do you like to do? Do you collect any toys? I have some Funko Pops, but they're kind of all like things that I watch. So this whole shelf over here has like all of my Marvel ones. Um, got Riri, Iron Man, several Iron Mans really, um, a Spider-Man, I have the Collector. And then I have an Ahsoka Funko Pop and a Poison Ivy one. Got a little Baby Yoda statue. Got this thing. A little Octo plushy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hmm. I had uh, um, somebody in the Something is Killing with Children Facebook group. There's several people that have made stuff now. But <laughs> I thought about keeping a dice in here. <laughs> one of my D20s. <laughs> That's fantastic. I like this little thing. Oh, Ahsoka. Yeah. It's called a little itty bitty. I don't know. I saw it at Hallmark in the kids area and I bought it. <laughs> like, here, buy this if you have a friend having a baby. And I was like, no, it's for me. So have you been watching The Mandalorian in that as oh, well? Hell yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. I knocked everything over. That's fantastic. I, I've been enjoying that. I loved how, like, I am a Rosario Dawson fan. Yes. So whenever she showed up as Ahsoka, like, I was super pumped. I just super pumped. fucking love Ahsoka. So I'm very excited for her. I'm ready. I need it today. I Afra is my dream. So I'm just waiting. I have my whole, I have my whole theory for how I think she's going to show up. So I think, right? Because we're getting the Obi-Wan show. I think... Hayden Christensen's going to get a Vader series. I think she's going to show up in the Vader series. I think she's going to get name dropped in Rebels or something like that because they've already started pre-production on a Indiana Jones in Space series. So you're not you're not kidding all like you're I'm, a huge Star Wars fan. I'm, like, it's, <laughs> happening. it's happening. And you know, she's in the realm of like Luke, Leia, Han, all of that. She, you know, meets them, the Ahsoka timeline. She's probably gonna show up, hang out with Hera, either get name dropped or show up in. I think she's gonna get name dropped in Rebels. I think they're gonna do a Vader series. She's gonna show up in the Vader series and then she's gonna get her own shebang. Ideally, Dream World. But. Well, you guys heard it here first. Like, it's if it happens, it's all because of Caroline. I am manifesting her. It's gonna be Chloe Bennett. It's happening. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm all for that now. Chloe Bennett. She's perfect. Um. Yeah, you're not kidding. You are a steroid. Like, you've watched all <laughs> of the movies, and oh yeah, you, you've watched all of Clone Wars, or you you said you're getting through. No, I haven't watched. I am very bad for, for shame because I haven't watched Bad Batch yet either. Um, but I'm slowly catching up. I'm on season, f I'm at the very end of three, almost at four. Yeah, it's a long series, and it, like, it, a lot of content, yes. Because, like, that did, 
I, it was surprised whenever it said like, oh, the ninth and final season. I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure that Clone Wars the cartoon came out when I was I was in high school. Mm-hmm. It took long breaks, but because you gotta remember, there was also like the writer strike that happened and all this other shit that like you know there were longer gaps than normal between seasons for some of them. But yeah, I mean that series is why Filoni is who he is at Marvel. Or I'm sorry, at um Lucas Vision, Lucasfilm. Or yeah. Lucasfilm or Disney film, Lucas Disney. I don't know. That's why he's doing all the things and he's almost in charge, him and John Favreau. They're not in charge, but they're really in charge. Yeah, like he likes Lucas loves um his vision on oh, like yeah. what things are go going and stuff like so that's why he's given him so much creative freedom with that series and how well that series is done. He's like, yeah, mm -hmm. go full tilt. I would like to see them do a lot more with the Dark Horse too, like Mara Jade as Luke's wife. I'm sorry, no, not Mara Jade. Um, now I'm questioning myself if that's her name. No, it is. It's Mara Jade. Very good team. Yeah, you're. I'm not even gonna question that. It seems like you know your know your shit about Star Wars. I like a lot of Star Wars. Now I know people give a lot of crap on like it, Episode One, Two, and Three. What are your thoughts on those ones? I enjoyed seeing all of the movies when I saw them because in my mind, I, I saw them as a kid, mind you. You know, I wasn't born when the second three came out, so I wasn't trying to compare the new first three to the first first three. Ha. Huh. You know, I just went and I was like, ooh, fun sci fi movies, characters in space with light up swords. Like, I thought it was so aesthetically pleasing and just fun as a kid. I never felt, I never understood why people wanted to like be mad at it constantly. The more you attack it, the less content you're going to get from it. Yeah. And people must have loved it because episode two spinned off into a cartoon. So that lasted nine nine seasons. Mm -hmm. And it is more well renowned than most of the movies are. Unfortunately. And even with the last three, like I didn't go into them. And I think this is where like I kind of benefit myself with movies and things like that. I never go into them expecting a lot because half the time I do that and I get disappointed. So I've just been like, I'm just gonna go into it and hope I just enjoy what I'm watching. And I did with the last three Star Wars movies. Were they the greatest plot ever? No. Did I go see them with my family during the holidays? Yes. Did I have fun? Yes. And that's what I always... I, Star Wars has become like a holiday movie in, in mm -hmm. my eyes. Um, and it's been fantastic. I love the spinoffs too. Like Rogue One was probably one of my favorites. Yeah, Rogue One was amazing. I, I'm, I'm still in the team of i don't think han solo was the best cast movie but i still enjoyed it donald glover was there so that's all i needed to be convinced to go see it yeah i love donald glover um uh, i and they're they're coming out with andor that's going to be mm -hmm. like the the sequel to uh rogue one i'm super that's probably one of my between that and the boba fett series coming out those are my two favorite ones coming out and ahsoka of course because you I was bring gonna it say, back. ahsoka and rebels for me is just like that's it my girl i don't know is it... i mean the ob series too it's gonna be fucking amazing i'm so happy for more ewan mcgregor in my life always yeah he's coming back is he mm -hmm. ewan yeah. mcgregor is obi-wan hayden christensen as a i was gonna say darth vader but anakin i guess still i think he'll, he'll play He'll play a little bit of Darth Vader in that, wouldn't he? I think there's going to be flashbacks to Anakin whilst mostly... I don't know. He doesn't go full Vader. I don't know. Do you go full Vader? I don't know. Like, well, they do. I don't want to ruin it for you, but, like, I don't know how far... He, where Bouts he becomes Vader in, in the Clone Wars series, but, like, how... I, I don't know. He was half and half. Sometimes, yeah, like, so I'm wondering if that's what they're going to do or if they're going to kind of do a little bit of like kind of Clone Wars-esque time and age him a little through that. I don't know. 
I have been trying to avoid reading things about it and potentially spoiling it for myself because this is one of those things where I'm like, I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to watch it. I just want to be happy that I'm watching it. <laughs> and then also you want Chloe Bennett. I, I, I think Brandon yes. Comics Kings could agree with you on Chloe Bennett becoming Dr. Afro. Oh yeah, we've had hype moments about it with each other. We're like, it needs to happen. Everyone <laughs> I talk to who likes Afro, I bring up Chloe Bennett and they're like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. And I'm like, if we just collectively put it out there enough, someone somewhere at some level of Lucasfilm will hear it and push it up the ladder. Because Man, I, that shit. I'm, a, I'm a fan of Star Wars, but like the Star Wars movies, I haven't read any of their books. I haven't read any of their comics or in that. I just, I like the movies. I watch the cartoon, mm -hmm. but you and Brandon are huge. Like you guys read the comics, read the books. Um, and, and that, and you guys are, all three of us are in love with Chloe Bennett. So she's, just, she's wonderful. So before we wrap things up for this stream, we may go a little longer. Uh, I just want to say, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. Like yeah, it's been a great conversation. I've learned so much. Like even though I haven't asked you much questions, just by talking with you and mm -hmm. and you've shared so much about what you love and who you love, and like, it's I been can, fantastic. This is why it's so great working at a comic shop. I just do this four hours all day. And to be honest with you, I had no idea until now, like you, that you were a Star Wars fan. To be honest with you, like I knew you that I you loved that, Iron Man. I, mean, I don't know, like all the rules of the Star Wars world. I just really enjoy it. And when I like it, I get really into the thing I like. So I'm like, I know a lot about specific things in Star Wars. Yeah, same with same with me and that, but like you've been, yeah, I had no idea that you were reading Dr. Aphra mm -hmm. or watching the Clone Wars. Yeah, and, slowly, and slowly digging myself out of the Clone Wars shame hole. And I've only had nine seasons to get through it. <laughs> and I just want to say congratulations on becoming a manager at a comic book store yes. and to you and uh, Jeremy for getting your own exclusive. Yes, it's a big deal. I still like every now and then I just look at it and I'm like, it's real. It's actually here. <laughs> Yeah, I it's it in my hands. Sometimes uh, unbelievable at, at times to see that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. But yeah, no, it's been a fantastic conversation I had with you, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Absolutely. Guys, if you're watching this, make sure to go follow her on Instagram and go follow them. You promised me comics on YouTube. The link is down below. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and ding, ding, ding that notification bell yeah. for future videos because right now is not the last stop. After this show, it's going to be Comics Kings and Missing Link doing their Infinite Rants video. I'm not sure what they're ranting about this week, but you're going to want to go check show. that out. Then Nick Comic Culture dropping his second video of the day because he's overcompensating for something. Who knows what, but go check it out. Then after that, Big Herm Collectibles and Sam, my dad, Sam's Tangled Web, hashtag Aww. Sam to 1K, uh, will chop it up about movies, DC, Marvel, indies, who knows? Go tune in and find out. And then hopefully the man, the myth, the legend, Tomorrow Cinema will be back mm -hmm in action i know he's been busy for a while but i'm sure he'll be back in action for what are you reading with brandon from comics king as his co-host and hopefully you guys will all be there and check it out thank you so much caroline it's yes, been a fantastic Tommy. conversation um, I always love to hang out last question i i do have for you I, I know you're huge into indies, but like you said, you you read a lot of Iron Man and uh, some Marvel and that. But what are some of your, like your top ten titles that you're reading right now that you you think Ooh. that everybody should jump on to? Reading right now, wow, that's always a really hard question. Can I think of ten books? Let's find out. I mean, Eat the Rich is great. Um, Wind, although it technically did just take a break when the third volume starts back up. Everyone needs to read that. Um, Something is Killing the Children is about to start its spinoff, which is... Um, House of Slaughter. Oh, thank you. I was like, God, something's going to think of House of Slaughter is about to start up with that. 
Uh, the Joker series right now is amazing. They're doing all the murder. I highly recommend you get into it. Um, what else? Saga's about to come back soon. Everybody read Saga when Saga comes back. Catch up now if you're not there already. Why is it so hard to think of this many books? I'm like mind blinking. Um, a lot of stuff that like I'm reading and going back and reading is more of the old trade. So like Wicked and Divine is something that I picked up. Umbrella Academy is something I think everyone should go read. It's fabulous. Um, the Champion series is one of my favorites. If you're looking to get into, mm, I kind of wanted to say less known, but they're not so less known anymore. But the younger characters, if you're a little tired of the older generation, so to say, of the superheroes. I know every now and then I get tired of reading, you know, Iron Man doing the same shit, just slightly different every day. So there's always stuff out there for everyone. I, I do have a question. Uh, the Umbrella Academy. Mm -hmm. um, how much is it like the show? Because I've watched iZombie and the I've read iZombie. The characters are the same. The monkey uh, exists. Um, it, what they did, because, so there's three volumes out right now volume one volume two volume three and they kind of took a little bit in pieces of some of them and put them together to make a season the fact that they changed um one of the characters to emmy raver hampton the african-american woman they so she is not african-american in the comics so that whole subplot is unique to the show and everything like that um a lot of it was just simply like hey how much of this weird sci-fi fucking superhero book can we actually make in real life technological capabilities what can we actually do what can we actually make how do we really you know put some of this stuff on screen without it looking completely fake so they had a lot of that to deal with it i tell people you're getting two different stories one doesn't <clears throat> one does not spoil the other Okay. Yeah, because like I had that issue, like I and I'm not sure if you watched the show I Zombie. I I mm -hmm. watched that show and then I read the, the book and it's night and day from each other, even yeah. the name of the character. And like she instead of working in a morgue in the comics, she works in a graveyard. Oh wild. So it, it but both great stories. Most and, people if you've read the comic of the Umbrella Academy first, are not happy with the show. If you watch the show then read the book you're gonna be happier because you're not waiting for things to happen so to speak you're not like oh how are they gonna bring xyz moment to life oh they didn't do it the way they thought i did or oh they changed this one specific thing it's more of a oh this is new i wonder if that that's that's the thing too because like like i said i watched i zombie before i read the book and i enjoyed it i and then other people I, i've seen comments in that saying like oh well it wasn't like the show or it wasn't like mm -hmm. the book i didn't like how they did this and that i wonder if that's the that's the thing like maybe we that should watch the, the show first <laughs> the fair warning i give to people i'm like hey if you watched this show and you liked the show and that's why you're reading this just understand like it's going to be very different not thematically just expositionally Interesting. I may have to. I I've been interested in going to pick up. Uh, I love it. I uh, highly recommend it. That like I've done. I like I've watched that show and um, what was the other one? Um, Lock and Key. Yeah, I actually really like Lock and Key. I think it's great, yeah. and that's one that when we were talking about Disney picking up, you know, indie titles, I was like, well, Netflix has a DC title technically. Because it's DC. Yeah, but that's Netflix, though. Like, that's the only thing you got to think about. Is like, di when you think of Disney, you think that they're only going to be picking up yeah. Marvel. I don't and then think when Disney you see will that ever boom. pick up DC, but I think they'll do indies for sure. Unless yeah. DC goes under. Um, Root. What was I talking about? Oh, Lock and Key. That's, that's one book that I, I went back and read, and it's exactly like. Really? It, it's I don't, I don't know if it continues like that but it, it that whole first scene is like exactly That's the same exciting. i really it doesn't happen often when you get something that is that 
true to. And I wonder if that has to deal with any amount of the fact of like Neil Gaiman's involvement in anything at all. Another show that I recommend you you go check out, it's on Prime Video, um, just because you, you mentioned Neil Gaiman is uh, American Gods. Yes, I know I need to go watch that. It's on my list of things to do. I want to read the book, though. Yeah, I, I want to, like, Neil Gaiman is very, very mm -hmm. wordy sometimes, so you got to yeah. make sure to have some that's time. That's the whole reason I, I picked up Dune, and I was like, I am very excited for this. Brandon... Uh, or not Brandon Sanderson, wrong, wrong writer. Um, but he uses just far too many adjectives and modifiers and adverbs for me. I was like, this could be said with so many less words in a sentence. Yeah. Same with Grant Morrison sometimes, but I love Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin series. So does Stefan mm -hmm. Missing Link. And he does get wordy in that book quite a bit. It takes you a while to get through it, but it's well worth it sometimes. If it has reason, understandable. I don't want I don't want you to both draw it and explain it to me on the page and then also give me a little comment on the bottom that is telling me what's happening at the same time. Like, yeah. Just so you know. The, I don't need all the hand holding. But yep. Yeah. Guys, make sure to check out the rest of <laughs> what's happening on Whiplash Wednesday with the PCP Army Bad Batch. Make sure to go follow Caroline on Instagram and go okay. follow Caroline and Sparks on YouTube for You Promise Me Comics, and go follow her cat on Instagram as well. Mango. Sometimes she makes appearances on Mango Mondays. Mango Mondays. Hashtag Mango Mondays. And also, hashtag Chloe Bennett for Dr. Afro. Yes. Make it, try and make it happen. We yeah. So it. I hope, hopefully, at this point in the chat, I want to see hashtag <laughs> Chloe Bennett for Dr. Afra. I know Brandon, Comics Gangs, I know you're watching you're going to be doing it as well. So thank you so much, Caroline. This has been a fantastic talk. Thanks for having me. I'm always down to chat and clown. All right, guys, station. And as always, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>